we are going to talk about the insurance as a sector as a vertical general insurance will try to cover all the assets it might be an automobile it might be aviation it becomes mandatory for all these companies to have a fire insurance based on the nature and type of trade the insurance are being particularly designed the major loss in any business is the financial loss it is not just about losing the asset good morning and welcome to the first session of principles and practice of general insurance now this is a very very interesting subject and we are going to talk about the insurance as a sector as a vertical and as a concept why this matters the most when it comes to the indian economy and what is the importance of insurance in our daily walk of life so insurance actually if you start looking in though we say it's a matter of solicitation but still insurance is very very important because without insurance neither the business nor the human life can continue so let's go forward and try to understand the aspects about interview and in terms of how the insurance comes into picture and we will also look into what are the general factors that are involved in terms of governing the various types of insurance now moving forward we are going to talk about the insurance and you can probably see the logos of the leading companies in India who are providing general insurance. So we have the New India Assurance Company, we have the Apollo Bunic, the HDFC Ergo, quite good names there, Future Generali, Tata AIG, ICIC Lombard. These are all the names that you have probably heard in that name in the vertical of general insurance. But before we go to these brands, before we go into the subject, let us first try to understand what is the meaning of general insurance all about. So general insurance or the non-life insurance policies, including automobile, homeware policies, and we are going to talk about payments, providing payments, depending on the loss from a particular financial event. So let's try to understand this first and then we shall proceed further. Now, general insurance means we are talking about those products, those non-life products or the assets which are not related to the human life aspect, which means general insurance will try to cover all the assets. It might be an automobile, it might be aviation, it might be about crops, it might be about home, it might be about a building or a marine, all those factors which are not concerned with the human life fall into the category of general insurance. General insurance is a wide body subject and it involves a lot of thinking and a lot of factors to be covered. Why? Because today if you look into the business, right from the day when the business is started, there are a lot and a lot of factors that need to be taken care of. Because every business is subjected to some kind of accidents or some kind of hazards that can destroy the life of the business. So every business house spends lakhs and crores of rupees in terms of insuring their assets, in terms of insuring their machinery, land, building, so that they are able to run the business without any problem, without any risk in future. So in that case, general insurance is a very, very important factor. And these are all the companies that you would have heard about in the Indian domain, in the Indian sphere. We also have foreign companies like AIG, which is tied up with Tata, Future Generali, which is tied up with the Future Group. Then we have the IFCO Tokyo. We also have Alliance, which is a part of Bajaj. We also have companies like Chola MS, which is Morgan Stanley Group coming into picture. We have the Ergo from UK. We also have the Apollo Munich from the Munich Insurance Group altogether. So there are a lot of players who are into the vertical of general insurance. All of these players have invested huge amount of money in terms of protecting the assets of the company. Now, moving forward, let's try to understand the meaning of general insurance in particular. 
insurance contracts that do not come under the ambit of life insurance are called as general insurance as i was trying to tell you about which does not cover life so is lic a part of general insurance definitely not other than life anything else that is being covered is a part of the general insurance so it is very very important does even a building have a life does even an automobile have a life a ship has a life a machinery has a life the answer is yes in terms because even their activities their operational features need to be protected if something happens in the due course of action the companies need to have a backup through which they will be able to make the company or get the assurance back saying that we are ready to protect you in case of any disaster that takes place so the different forms of general insurance are fire marine motor accident or other miscellaneous non-life insurance let's look at these factors now we have a lot of businesses which are or affected by fire accidents now for example if i'm going to talk about petrol bunks they are prone to fire attack or if they are talking about chemical business they are prone to fire attack gas companies all these things have a vulnerability towards fire breakout so in that case in that condition it becomes mandatory for all these companies to have a fire insurance attached to their properties so that in case of a breakout in case of any untoward incident happening they can go back to the company and get the money back which will help them to suffice the business and start again similarly when we are talking about marine business now this is also a very very important kind of insurance that we are talking about India accounts for about 23% in terms of marine cargo and shipping business across the globe because we do have a very active port and India is known for its exports and imports of cargo material through the shipping business altogether. But ships are prone to danger at the high seas. So there might be a problem where the ship is lost or the goods are lost or some damage happens to the ship altogether in that case in that conditions what we tend to do here is that we get into the marine insurance where we try to protect the ship and its contents by providing a premium beforehand itself there are many companies which are involved in marine insurance they try to look into the ship and its factors so that in any given point of time it can be helpful in terms of saving that particular vehicle or the particular ship altogether now we also have the motor insurance a very very common factor most of us who own a two-wheeler or a four-wheeler are paying insurance for that particular vehicle that is for the protection of the vehicle in case of any untoward incident happening to that vehicle or if we meet with an accident apart from the human damages for the vehicle damages we do have insurance a particular amount is calculated based on the incident based on the situation and then that amount is given back to the owner in order to support the incidental expenses followed by we also have the accident insurance now you might ask here accident involves human life so how does it come into general insurance when i talk about the accident insurance this is more related towards the vehicle and not towards the human so there might be situation when the big vehicles or big trucks involve in accident or there is any accidental breakouts that happen on your assets that happen on your companies then we are going to go for those accidental insurance now let me give you an example in terms of not only the uh, transports and logistics but also in terms of the daily operations which happens in companies suppose accidental breakout of some untoward incident let's say there is a terrorist attack or there is a bomb attack or there is some kind of disaster that happens or there is a hit through because of some kind of activity that is happening there are some accidental coverage that the company seeks with the insurance so that they are able to recoup back the money and they come back to normalcy and run the business so in all those conditions i would always say that general insurance is a very very important factor 
it's a very very important constituent that actually helps the company to take a position and start moving forward. Now, there are several miscellaneous non-life insurance activities also. So when I talk about this non-life insurance, these are all the factors which are actually not related to the regular walk of life, to the regular life insurance factors. So this is very, very important for all of us in terms of understanding it. Now, like the life insurance, general insurance come at a price in the form of premium. This is very, very important for all of us to know at the basic level. For a life insurance or for a non-life insurance, there is something called as premium and that premium has to be paid on an annual basis or a half yearly basis or a quarterly basis to the insurance companies because these life insurances matter a lot in terms of the development of the company and the backup altogether. So every year companies will be paying some amount in terms of the insurance factor. Now moving forward types of general insurance so let's have a quite quick look into the what are the types of general insurance that we are looking we'll start with the motor insurance health insurance travel we're going to talk about home we are going to talk about commercial fire insurance which is quite known theft this is also important we are also going to talk about property aviation one of the big sectors in india which is coming up livestock not to forget with agriculture in mind and uh, crop insurance which is also a part of the agro based industry so now if you have a look into the sectors of insurance that we are talking about starting with motor insurance which is quite known as we have discussed let's move on to the health insurance part health insurance is not only regarding to life but it can also be in terms of the health care basis which is slightly different from the normal life style altogether so health insurance also comes under the general insurance part travel insurance now you might say that while traveling there are possibilities there are chances where you might meet with an accident you might meet with any kind of disaster or any factor to just cover up the travel part to cover up all the materials that you have been carrying during a travel including your luggages including your components all those factor you could apply for a travel insurance so insurance as a business has got a very wide scope and general insurance is nothing less to it it's one of the biggest business that you can ever think about moving forward we also have the home insurance everybody knows about it our home is the most important place on the earth because that is where we live so you need to protect the home at any point of time home being a non-living thing we need a general insurance for it so any kind of untoward incident that happens to the home it might be due to an accidental purpose or a fire breakout or due to any natural calamities we need some sort of insurance to back it up and that's where the home insurance comes into picture followed by we have the commercial ins insurance. Commercial insurance is purely from the business standpoint of view. So this type of insurance is used in business activities, in trade activities. If there might be any kind of problems in the business or in the commercial transactions or in any kind of situation that goes on. So we will be using the commercial insurance at that point of time. Based on the nature and type of trade, the insurance are being particularly designed for it. So I would say commercial insurance is more of a tailor made product. It differs from business to business. Moving forward, fire insurance, we had already spoken about it, but yet this is one of the most important form of general insurance, which has been taken up by every kind of industry, every kind of organization, because any situation, any kind of factor, we might be subjected to any of the natural disaster, especially a fire breakout. So in order to just cover up ourselves, cover up the assets, we go for the fire insurance. Theft insurance, this is very, very important. Now, I would like to give you a small example here. 
when you are involving in a business that involves precious stones or precious metals, especially when I'm talking about the jewelry business, the gold business, you need to have the theft insurance altogether. Why? Because in any case of burglary or any case of theft that happens in the shop, the entire business comes to a standstill. Now, the attack or the incident might have taken place in a couple of hours or in a couple of minutes, but then the impact that the shop is going to face because of this kind of untoward incident is a very, very long lasting impact. So what the jewelry shops or the gold jewelers business try to do is that they apply for a theft insurance. So in case if any kind of a bad incident happens to their shop, they can go back and claim the insurance for the products that have been lost. Similarly, we also have property insurance. Now, property is slightly different from home insurance. When I talk about property, that includes land, building or a site, all those factors. So, which means I'm talking about the general property, the assets altogether. So, any damage to the property, any kind of changes or any kind of natural calamity spelling into it, we can look into the property-based insurance. Followed by, we have the aviation insurance. Now, if you look into the aviation sector, that is into the airlines business altogether, India is one of the most emerging destination where a lot of private airlines made their entry. Of course, due to the financial loss or turbulence, there has been a disturbance in that sector. But nevertheless, aviation is a very, very promising sector for most of the people who have looked into it as a sector or as a sunrise sector of business. But aviation carries a huge amount of risk, both from the human aspect as well as from the non-human aspect. You know, the cost of buying an aeroplane is very, very expensive. And it is even more expensive to maintain that kind of a business and run the show. So it, it becomes very, very important for the companies. They cannot even take a slightest chance there in terms of misguiding or in terms of leaving the business carelessly. So they have to take every single inch of the business carefully and for which they would like to go for an aviation insurance which tries to cover about the machinery, which tries to cover about the ground duties factor, which tries to cover about all the processes that are involved in the aviation sector. Recently, you would have heard about the companies like Jet Airways, companies like Air Asia or Indigo. All these companies have been trying to claim insurance in the case of a pandemic, in the case of the non-delivery of business or in the case of any untoward incident that has taken place in their industry. Now, followed by, I would like to talk about the livestock insurance. Now, this is also a very, very important business that has been spoken about in the sector. Now, in India, agriculture, though we say it's the backbone of the economy, of late we have decreased the output of agricultural income, but still livestock and agro-related business have got its own presence in India. Now, if you go towards southern parts of Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Andhra and other places, there is a lot and lot of emphasis on livestock business because people feel that that business has got a lot of profit margin and it is quite capable in terms of producing long yielding results. But let us talk about the negative side for a moment. In case if there is going to be a disease that attacks these animal or if there is going to be a kind of virus or if there is going to be any untoward incident that happens on the livestock together, all of a sudden the entire business comes to a standstill. Now that is the most dangerous situation that any farmer or any person can think about in the daily walk of life. He does not want the business to get affected and he does not want the animals that he has been rearing to come to an end. So what he does is that he goes and approaches for a livestock insurance. So in case anything happens to that rearing animal, the cattle or the poultry or the sheep or any kind of thing, you can claim the insurance and through that you will be able to to support and bring back your business. The similar thing is also applicable for the crop insurance. Now in India, 
farmers struggle every month every year in terms of producing the output and taking the output to the market many a times it is unfortunate that most of our farmers are not getting the equal value or the right value for what they are producing in their fields that situation is quite pathetic but then what happens is that the government always tries to come back and try to fix in an msp that means they want to put in a minimum support price and push the farmers up but apart from this the farmers are subjected to all kind of natural risk which involves flood a famine a drought or a fire breakout or sudden incidental kind of accidents or you know animals just trampling around the fields all those kind of things which can actually destroy the crop altogether now there are chances that you know when you can be affected by a pesticide or by a pest or any other chemicals that could completely ruin that crop altogether so in that case what happens is that for the farmer his livelihood comes under question mark so in order to stop that in order to give him a backup in order to give him some sort of support we are talking about the crop insurance here crop insurance is a very very important thing and that actually helps the farmers to retrieve back their life and come forward together as a system now that is how you would see the different types of insurance that we have been talking about under the general insurance category now moving forward the need for a general insurance now this is very very important i would like request all of you to spend some time with me in terms of understanding the need now one of the main reasons why one should go for an insurance is to protect the ones belonging assets against financial loss the major loss in any business is the financial loss it is not just about losing the asset or losing the you know components altogether but the financial loss that incurs for a business is never ever returned back so that is where the challenge comes to a business so in order to stop that financial loss in order to get that business back into movement you need to protect your business like how you protect your life like how you protect your near and dear so that is why the need for general insurance comes in with utmost importance so let us take general insurance insurance not lightly but as a serious factor that could create an advantage for your business moving forward when one has earned an accumulated property it becomes a right for him to protect it and the law also requires us to be insured against some liabilities now let's try to understand this concept every single human being on this earth struggles to make a property struggles to earn money and to create it as an asset in this lifetime so down the road what happens is that if we are not prudent enough if we are not sharp enough if we are not careful enough in protect in protecting that property altogether the property might go away from our hands there might be some sort of destruction that can happen to that property so what we need to do is that it is our primary responsibility that we look into the property we protect it and we take it up with care sometimes what happens is that people just forget it and they think that the property will be able to sustain by itself but the law also says that if you are not taking care about your property if you have not spent time to protect it or to take the preventive measure even the law will not be able to protect you the law will not be able to cover you at those times so that is why whenever you are trying to accumulate a property whenever you are trying to accumulate a system all together it is our job it is our duty that we go forward and we see that this property is completely protected and the property gets all the benefits as far as possible then that in case we calculate or we you know incur the loss factor when we cost to the another person that person is entitled for compensation 
in business or in general walk of life let us also understand that when you are creating loss for somebody that loss is also applicable to you because that is a very very important concept in life and also in insurance by default if we think that we would have created some sort of disadvantage for others some sort of negative effects or impacts on other we need to pay the compensation to that person Many a times during a road accident or many a times during any kind of accidents that happen across, people feel that it is only about a vehicle and they just go away. It is not. The vehicle is not just a vehicle for the owner or the for, for the person who's got impacted. It is an asset for him. It is a hard earned asset for him. So that person again has to spend money to get the vehicle back in shape and to get the vehicle back on the road. So that is why you need to understand that in case when a loss or damage is being incurred on another person, we need to take the responsibility of paying back that person. So any loss that has been incurred to another person, compensation has to be delivered. So when we talk of compensation, the only way to compensate back, the only way to retrieve back what has happened is insurance. So it becomes very, very important for each one of us to understand the general insurance factor. Moving forward, to ensure that we can afford to pay that compensation, the law requires us to buy liability insurance. This is very, very important so that the responsibility of paying the compensation is transferred to an insurance company. Now, in case without our knowledge, without our presence, there might be some time when we had made or when we have incurred loss for other. So we don't have the money to compensate at that point of time. What can we do for those people? We can probably transfer the liability to the insurance company, which will take the responsibility of paying that particular amount back to those person. So that is where insurance companies act as a backup. They act as a cushion where the companies can rely back, where they can go back, where they can believe in case if some problem happens, if some kind of defect happens, the insurance company is available. They will pay on behalf of us so that both the concerned parties do not enter into law and they can avoid arguments altogether. Moving forward with this, we come to the conclusion of the first session on the introduction to general insurance. I hope and believe that this session was interesting, useful and informative. In the next session, we will talk about the evolution of insurance, the various methods, the various forms of how insurance came up in India. Until then, stay tuned, stay blessed and stay enlightened forever. Thank you once again for joining me today.